It's uh, March the 20th, and this is just a little short thing on uh, weights. And without having actual real numbers, all you have is guesses. Uh, Mike Palmer advocated the, advocates the value of actually weighing the colonies, then you know what you've got, you know what they've used, and you don't rely upon guesswork. And I've been, for a number of years, I've tracked weights using this old feed scale. I keep it here year round and track the winter weight losses and the summer weight gains. But I haven't done a particularly good job of documenting that anywhere other than the notes on my phone. So this year I did a little better and I actually took those data points and put them onto this graph. And you'll see the slope of the line shows that it, it starts to uh, decrease a little more rapidly after J January the 26th. But it started at 155 pounds on October the 19th. And from Oct October the 19th to January the 26th, it lost 15 pounds, so 140 there. So 15 pounds over 10 weeks, that's a pound and a half a week. Then from January the 26th to March the 19th, it lost a further 18 pounds. And that is um, over dividing the 18 pounds over seven and a half weeks. It's just about just about two pounds, just over two pounds a week. So that's useful to know. I follow Mike's theory that if you feed them like heck in the fall and work your butt off then, then you don't have to be worrying in the spring. This particular colony is just a double deep colony underneath the top cover there's two inches of insulation um, the, this is just a shield on the front to prevent the wind blowing directly in in that hole and um, because it was going to be a mild winter i didn't go to the extra strap of putting any insulation on the sides i figured it'd be okay and so far it has now when you come down to the the five over fives the I have a little more data there too, and that's because I consistently weigh the colonies in the fall, having fed them to an average of 75 pounds, knowing that my empty equipment is 25 pounds. And so, um, what did I find? Well, um, usually what I'll do in the spring is I'll go around all the colonies, un take the outer foam off, take the lid off, check the bottom boards, peep at the colony from underneath, weigh them and see what they've lost. And this year, because of other commitments, I didn't get around to doing everybody. I just did 20 in this yard. And what I found was that for the 20 in this yard, I looked further at my data and found I was actually missing data from one of the ones in the inner. By the inner, I mean colony number two or three on one of the ones on the outer, by that I mean on one, one or four from the outside counting left to right. So that actually left me with 18 colonies where I got a before weight for the fall and a March the 19th weight yesterday. And so it, that was, so I totaled the weight loss to 400 and, let's see if you can see that, 405 pounds, divided that by 18 and that gave me 22 and a half pounds with a range of 18 to 26 pounds. And then I suddenly I thought, well, I've always wondered and never seen any real um, effect of whether whether they actually uh, position in the in the line makes any difference to the weight consumed. So I thought, oh, that's easy. Why didn't I think of this before? I just totaled it. So I totaled the weights of the outer two, the west and the east, and then the middle ones. I totaled them separately. And so when I weighed those, for the nine that weighed on the west and the east was 203 pounds, and for the nine that weighed in the middle, it was 202 pounds. So I thought that was really interesting, the fact that it's virtually, virtually the same. There is no increase or decrease in consumption based upon those on that sample of there of 18, where they were in that stack. So... That's a bit of data I didn't have before. If I was uh, a bit more nerdy or I get a lot more bored, I'll uh, dig through my previous records and see what that compares to, because I have the numbers, but I've never actually made that comparison. 
and I'm not, left me wondering what's going on. Is it a, a function of the mild winter where it hasn't made that much difference where you were? Or is it that this actual insulation on the side makes a difference? I mean, because sometimes we'll do things that make us feel better and we don't really know if it makes any difference to the bees or not. But uh, bees are not worried. We've got a few inches of snow tomorrow and they're safely ensconced in Wixing, in Wisconsin. Wow, that's a tongue twister.